Dean and I are going to build this wine rack. It's small, isn't it? It's not actual size, Dean. Yeah, I knew that. We're going to use this beautiful jarrah, and for the sides, we're going to use this fantastic door that we found at the demolition yard. Yeah. Mm. And also, this amazing timber is iron bark, and it's from the Woolloomooloo Wharf. The wharfs were built in 1910, so uh, this timber is just about to turn 100. Iron bark is beautiful timber, but it's very hard, so we had it dressed at a machine shop. The cost of the machining was less than $20, and it'll save us a lot of time and effort. Okay, Dean, let's look at the plan. Right, I think we should cut the uprights first, which is out of these, out of the, the 40 by 19s. Yep. 790. Good. Right. The circular saw is good and sharp, so we get a good clean cut without splintering the ends. Good. Now, the door. What, do you want me to leave? No, I'm going to cut the door. Oh, of course. Two perfect halves. Right. Could I leave you with that and, and I'll stain the dowels? Yep, no problem. Good. We were lucky to find the door. The two halves are perfect for the sides of the wine rack. I need to stain the Tassie oak to match the jarrah. The stain is messy and a ground sheet is mandatory. Oh, and don't forget gloves and eye protection. It can splash a bit. You can do this by wiping it on with a cloth, but I prefer to use the brush. Okay, well I reckon one coat is heaps. They look great. Now let's go and check how Dean's going. All square and uh, ready to drill. Good. We need to drill the holes in the uprights every 120 mil. So we're using a 20 mil spade bit, so the 19 mil dowels will slide in easily. So our first piece here is the template, and it basically marks the holes in all the other ones. Very so clever, Dean. One? I thought so. And while Dean's finishing off the drilling, I give the top a light sand to take off the sharp edges. After the material's been planed, the edges of this very hard timber are potentially splinter hazards, so I need to fix that. But not the centre, because that's where we glue and join it. OK, that's all nice and straight and the holes line up. Shall we put it together? Oh yes, indeed. We need to thread the dowels through the frames, making sure they are set up square, and then lightly nail the frames okay. together. Right, well the racks are done. All we have to do now is drill, countersink and screw them to the sides. OK. There you go, Dan. Thank you. Cool. We screw the end uprights to the half door and our wine rack starts to take shape. Yep, lovely. Nice, nice. Turn it around that way. Mm -hmm. Okay, well that's really starting to take shape now. The two half doors work incredibly well as the base for this whole thing really. So then you want to tip it down and we'll uh, put the top frames in and then we can... Uh, we're getting pretty close actually. With the sides on, we can then screw the end and top frames. We don't want a back on the wine rack because the air should be allowed to flow and circulate around the bottles. Once we have the sides and inner frames in place, we can attach the beautiful iron bark top. Yep, bit of glue please. Yep. Okay, now we're going to glue and clamp the iron bark. So it, uh, it won't need a lot because it's machined beautifully. It fits perfectly. Thank you, sir. Sort of. We're going to put some 45mm screws into the underside of the top once the glue is dry. We don't want to spoil the look of the timber with screw heads showing. No worries. OK, and down we go. You got your clamps there, old buddy? Absolutely. Let's just line it up. That's good. Well, it works. Of course it works, Dean. Leave nothing to chance, that's what I say. No. I mean, yes. Do you bring the wine? Oh, actually, I've got one I prepared earlier. Well. Oh! So there we have it. A fairly simple project and our very attractive Woolloomooloo wine rack will hold 30 bottles of wine. That's two and a half dozen. Yes it is. <laughs>